Alrighty folks, today the 21st of September, the wars on one servers will go offline forever and all we will have left is the memories of a game which was genuinely special to us for a variety of reasons, but for many of us mainly how it got us through lockdown during the pandemic and how it brought old game and friend groups back online every day and established new ones for life. So having said all that, I wanted to take a trip down memory lane of Warzone 1, especially the Verdansk era and reminisce. Where can I begin anywhere other than when I was on the winning team of the very first Warzone game. I know I really haven't mentioned that much over the years. However, if you don't know or need a reminder, I was invited out to play Warzone at Infinity World Studios in February of 2020, about a month before Warzone released to the public. Myself, Syndicate and Sprat were teamed up in a lobby of 150 other top tier creators and we got the win, which I still genuinely consider a top 5 highlight of my career. I mean, the buzz from that was incredible. There was only one ever first match and we won it. For the record, we also won the first two ever games of Plunder that same day too. But anyways, the win was obviously a great feeling, but I remember us all coming away from that playtest thinking, wow, whatever we just played there was special. And I had like a month-long NDA signed to keep quiet about it before Warzone officially released. And that was one of the hardest kept secrets because I, I just knew COD fans were going to love this. What I didn't know though is how massive Warzone would become due to the world flipping on its head only a month later. Like we all went into lockdown two weeks after after Warzone released. Talk about timing, it's actually weird looking back now seeing one of my first ever challenge videos on Warzone was the quarantine challenge where I had to stay indoors the full game and I was only allowed to leave buildings for the essentials and a tiny bit of exercise. <laughs> I'm sure we'll talk more about the challenges later. It was crazy how many old friends I had that hopped on Warzone during that time, like friends I hadn't gamed with in years and friends who weren't even all that into games yet with nothing else to do, they, we had no commitments, they were getting stuck into Warzone every day. What a time to be alive. I mean, even Scottish COD players came back for one last series after like four years away, which sums everything up. But also on the other side, many new friends were made. Like for me personally, there's lots of streamers who I became friends with thanks to Warzone 1, like Beanbo and Drew Dog. I never knew them before Warzone 1, but also for me, the community, the Marley Mob, which we built over the past three years has been one of my favourite things I've ever done, including all the mad things we did together on the game, like the 150 player hot drops, and the most special of all, breaking the game's servers with the biggest explosion possible, and going viral for all our efforts. Like, the coordination required for 150 people to come together to achieve the same goal, when it can all go wrong in the blink of an eye, was just spectacular, so massive thanks to everyone who was a part of those great memories. We can't forget all the great memories we made with the different weapon metas, like for me, I feel a genuine emotional attachment to virtual guns in a video game. Guns like the SPR, Kilo, Swiss, MP5, everyone can all relate to, but there were so many weapons in the game that one player's favourite could be your worst gun. That was the great thing about it, seeing all the guns players swear by. Definitely let me know in the comments your favourite loadout, but gun against my head, I would have to say what my favourite loadout ever was, and I'm going to go for the Swiss Sniper and the Lapa SMG, which... Again, for lots of viewers right now, they might be thinking, I don't remember that, but that was such a fun SMG to use towards the end of the Verdansk era. And we can't talk about weapons though without mentioning some of the crazy overpowered guns which did plague the game at times, but we still tried to have fun with. I'm looking at your DMR, the most overpowered gun in Warzone history, and for me, one of the toughest times in the game's history was when that was on top. That was pretty grim, but there was some other unique overpowered guns which made for some crazy kills and clips like the AS Val which had infinite bullet penetration, the Hitscan SPR point and click sniper, and don't get me wrong, I know for a fact these broken guns did ruin plenty of players games at the time, but I think the majority of us tried to make the most of it and have some fun with them while we had the chance. I think it's pretty unanimous at this point, the best ever event for a game mode for Warzone 1 was the Haunting of Verdansk, the mode where players would fight it out against other zombie players in a bid to be the last human team standing. It was absolute chaos and just pure unadulterated fun, well, aside from the jump scare boxes. Oh yeah, fucker! Oh! The Black Ops Cold War reveal event was also a real time of hype in Warzone, and in fact, most of the events and the build up to them were great, it's just a shame one of the events led to the end of Verdansk, the most cherished map in Call of Duty history. When people say they miss Warzone, a lot of the time I think they mean playing in Verdansk during lockdown, those two situations combined make for the ultimate nostalgic cocktail, and when you think about it, being nostalgic for something which is only like 3 years old is insane, it just shows how much it means to us. If COD brought back Verdansk for 
for one game and one game only. I'll tell you right now, I'm landing in downtown and getting myself on top of White with a sniper and going to town. That's what I think when I think of Verdansk. For you, it might be Superstore Hot Drops, Promenade, be sure to let me know. Unfortunately, Caldera and COD Vanguard just didn't land with a lot of players, especially the ones who only got into COD and Warzone during lockdown. I guess the longer term COD players are used to the COD cycle where we prefer some games over than others, but we still play them all. Caldera was when a lot of players began to check out. For what it's worth, I still had a lot of fun in Caldera, especially at the end of it with the map changes, redeploy balloons, etc. Even the planes, which myself and Running Crutches set a world record in for kills and duos, and yeah, I had to get that in the video. But like I say, I, I've always tried to make the most of it. First and foremost, that is my job to entertain. But even if I was just a casual player, I still think I would have enjoyed it. But obviously not as much as Verdansk. And certainly not when Krampus was dominating the map. Oh god, that was a real low point. And also, that there has been some low points in the game's life. It's not all been great. Remember there was a time when every other match had a hacker in it, ruining the game for everyone. Bugs that would literally crash the server. Or stim glitches which would rob players of a well-earned victory. Those were all extremely frustrating periods we had to persevere through a game we so wanted to enjoy. Overall though, I loved how much of a sandbox Warzone 1 was compared to Warzone 2. I felt like you could play it in any way you liked in Warzone 1 with any gun as well if you were skilled or patient enough, you had a fighting chance of winning. That's what made doing all those challenges like the one box challenge so fun for me. Using the absolute wackiest guns you in the comments could imagine for me trying to get a win. And I can't believe I've got this far into the video without mentioning Resurgence or Rebirth Island. I wasn't the biggest Resurgence player, but if you were, then Rebirth Island is your for Dansk, which will always be cherished. We also had Plunder for those who wanted to enjoy a massive COD map with hundreds of players, but didn't want to die instantly in a battle royale. Tournaments, private lobbies, this really was a game for everyone, and in its prime has to be my favourite Call of Duty experience ever. So, before I wrap up, please let me know in the comments your favourite Warzone 1 loadouts, map, place to drop in that map, and any particular memories you have with friends on the game. Farewell. Warzone 1.